You've determined the drive motor on your dryer has failed. We're going to show you how to change it. All you're going to need is a putty knife, an adjustable wrench, a pair of slip joint pliers, a large straight blade screwdriver, a large Phillips screwdriver, a 5 16 nut driver, maybe a small flat blade screwdriver, and you should probably have a pair of safety gloves and goggles. Let me show you how it's done. Now the first step in this repair will be to disconnect the appliance from the power supply. If your dryer has a cord on it, simply unplug it from the receptacle. If it's hardwired, you'll need to find the breaker and turn it off. Now the main top is held down with two clips in the front corners and a couple of screws underneath the lint filter. So we'll remove the lint filter first, set that aside. Next, we'll remove the two Phillips screws that are hidden there. Take care not to drop them down into the air inlet, as they can be difficult to retrieve. Now, there are two clips that hold the top to the front panel, and they're located all about two inches in on either side. So with our putty knife, we'll go in close to the top, we locate that, and press inward on it, and pull the top forward, and that'll lift off. Now your dryer should be pushed back enough so that we can support the top up against the wall so that it doesn't fall backwards. Now with the main top up, Next thing we're going to want to do is disconnect the door switch harness. There's just a two wire harness there. Your dryer may have a three wire harness, but simply take a small flat blade, lift it in underneath the connector, free that tab, and pull them apart. Now at this point, you're probably going to want to put your safety gloves on because we do find that there are some sharp edges on the metal here. Next, there are two 5 16 hex head screws that secure the front panel to the cabinet. Simply remove those. Now we'll pull forward on the front panel. Now the drum is going to drop a little bit when we do that, but it won't go anywhere. And next we're going to lift up on it because there are two clips on the bottom that hold it at the bottom. We can remove the front panel, and we'll just set it aside. Next step will be to remove the drum and the belt. Now, in the right front corner, you'll see an idler assembly that the belt wraps around. Take note of how that belt goes around the idler, and then around the motor pulley, and then back out around the drum. So we're going to pull the idler pulley towards the cabinet, release the tension on it, roll the belt off of the motor pulley, and the idler assembly will come right out. It just sits on the base. Next, with the aid of the belt, I'm just going to lift up on that drum and disengage the rear rollers. And then pull it through the front of the cabinet, and we'll set that aside. Now, with the drum out of the way and the idler assembly out of the way, we're ready to remove the motor. Now, the motor is held the motor carriage with two spring clips, one at the front and a wider one at the back. And as well, the blower fan is connected to the back of the dryer and it's actually threaded onto the shaft. So we'll need to pull the harness off, remove these two clips, get the blower fan off, and then we can remove the motor. Now the lower clip for the wire harness for the motor is kind of hidden, so I would suggest we take these two clips off first. And since they're spring-loaded, sometimes they'll have a mind of their own. Might be best if we put our safety glasses on at this point. And with a large flat blade screwdriver, just engage one end of that spring clip, pry outward on it.
Same thing with the rear one. Remove both of those clips. We can turn the motor slightly so that we can get out that retaining clip for the motor harness. Just get that out. And remove the harness. Now you'll notice at the back of the motor where that blower wheel sits on there. The blower wheel has a square shank on it. We're going to take a large adjustable wrench and fasten that right to the blower wheel and thread it onto the motor with a left hand thread. So it basically means we turn it clockwise to loosen it. The pair of slip joint pliers we grab the front of the motor shaft with the adjustable wrench, we'll hold on to the blower. Now they're normally fairly tight, so you may have to give it a pretty good snap to get it loose. Once it's freed up, they usually turn off pretty easy. Now we can lift the motor out of its cradle. We're ready to install the new one. Now take note of the new motor that you've gotten. It will come with a single drive pulley on it. If your original has a single drive pulley on it, then it's a straight exchange. You may have a type that has a two speed, and at that point you can elect to take the old pulley off of your old motor and install it on the new motor. As well, take note of the motor harness connector and switch. If they're not the same, the instruction sheet that comes with the new motor will indicate what modifications need to be made. On this particular one, it's a straight exchange, so that'll be nice and easy. So we're going to engage that rear shaft into the blower wheel. And just let the motor set in this harness loosely. And then we'll try to thread that motor shaft onto the blower. You may have to hold that blower wheel towards the front of the dryer, enough for the threads to start to engage. Once they've started, we'll want to lift that motor up and make sure that the two bushings sit into the cradle properly. Now with our adjustable wrench, channel locks. I want to lock that blower wheel onto the motor shaft. Now we're ready to reinstall the two mounting clips. Again, we should have our safety goggles on for this. Now the wider part of that rear clamp, there's two elongated tabs. They go to the very back. And there's slots in the two front portions that will hook onto the motor mount. So engage one side, and then with our flat blade, put some pressure on the other side until it hooks in place. and repeat that procedure for the front one. Reinstall the wire harness to the motor. Make sure that the locking tabs are outside the body of the switch and lock firmly in place. Now we're ready to put our idler assembly back in and the drum. Now that we have the new motor in place, we'll take some time and show you where the idler bracket should sit. There's a slot in the base frame, and the front of that idler bracket sits into there. There's two little tabs that will hook in on the back. So when it's finished position, it should look like this. And our belt will come around over the top of the idler, beneath it, around the motor pulley, back out, and around the drum. Now this will tend to 
flop around a bit while you're putting the belt on. As long as you know the position that it should end up in, you'll be able to get it in place. We're ready to reinstall the drum. We want to make sure that this groove sits over top of the two rear rollers. rotate it a bit just to get it to fall into place. There. Line the belt up approximately where the wear marks will be on the outside of the drum. And then we'll reach in from the front and we'll rotate that belt around the idler and the motor pulley. And we can rotate the drum clockwise, just hold it against the back bulkhead. Make sure that the belt lines itself up. And now we're ready to reinstall the front panel. There are two square or rectangular holes at the bottom of the front panel, and we want to clip those or slide those over those two clips on the cabinet. At this point, you'll have to hold the drum back into place. And we're ready to reinstall the two 516 screws. Next, reconnect the door switch harness connector. Make sure it snaps firmly in place. We're ready to put the top down. Just pull forward on it a bit, and then press down firmly in each corner. Next, we'll reinstall the two Phillips screws that connect the top to the lint filter holder. And again, make sure that we don't drop those screws down that opening. Slide the lint filter back into place. Reconnect the power and our repair is complete. <laughs>